Now, I don't know. I'll be fine using the teeny tiny toiletries, though. I mean, because that, that's all I get in hotels. You know, but we wonder why people get confused when they go to a hospital. If they have to use these toiletry items that are so different from what they used at home, and then they have to put on patient gowns, which go on the opposite way that shirts do. So that, that's confusing. And then I have to ring a call bell before I need to use the bathroom. And we wonder why people are having a hard time. It's not familiar. You're demanding neuroplasticity. So that, that's a good idea, too, is uh, bring familiar items to this person that they had from home. You know, they'll probably do better with their ADLs. You know, bring familiar foods. They're more likely to eat them. You know, their favorites. All right, we're going to talk about memory books and reality orientation because in early stage, I know I have dementia, and that's a really tough time for me. I have to go through my own grieving process. And this is kind of, I think, a blessing of the disease. Very shortly after I learn that I have dementia, and, and very shortly after I have a grasp on that, I forget that I have dementia. It, it really is a disease that affects the family and the caregivers, the, the client may not know exactly what's going on. And it, it might be a blessing because it may be one stress off the, of their back. I don't know. But my clients seem to laugh and be happy and go along and do their own things mo most of the time. It's the family that has the hardest time. But in early stage, I know a lot about my history, so I could help fill out a memory book. A memory book is a book that talks about your life, your past, your family, who am I? Uh, there are some sites that sell pre-made memory books. If you don't know how to get started, Mind to Start has one. The Alzheimer's Store on the Alzheimer's Association has one. Uh, the Alzheimer's Association Store is pretty cool. The Alzheimer's Store, they have a dummy engine part that you could put in an engine if someone keeps driving and you know you tried to talk them out of it. You could hook up the alternator to this fake carburetor thing and the engine doesn't turn, which is kind of a gentle way to have them kind of quit on driving. It's sabotage, but it might, be, it might be worth the 40 bucks if they, you know, rather than learning by mistake that they shouldn't drive anymore. Reality orientation is different. Uh, that stuff shouldn't go into a memory book. It should be its own thing. Reality orientation is when I know what the day is, what my appointment is. I might be writing down who came to visit me today, what my precautions are. That's something completely separate. That's when I'm crossing off the dates on the calendar. And a speech therapists do both uh, with clients that have dementia. Sometimes occupational therapists make them as well. But it's, it's something that the whole team should be using. So if the client has one in the room, you use it on a daily basis. The client's more likely to use it. So ask your OT and speech therapist, what is it? How do I do it? How can I integrate it into their day? And the way you do it is every day we talk about it. Practice makes perfect. Repetition will be a substitute for memory. Make sure they use it. You might have to remind them every day for two weeks, but then it becomes part of their routine. The picture that you should put on the front of the memory book is not the picture of how they look now. It's a memory book. It should be a picture of how I looked at my best, because that's what I look like. All this is temporary, right? The engagement photo, the photo when I'm 30 years old. Or think about when you first meet this client and we're doing our intake eval, and we say, how old are you? And she goes, I'm 40. And you go, no, it's 2012. And she goes, I'm 85, right? Whatever that first answer is, get the photo of when she was 40, because that's how she thinks she is. I mean, I know it didn't really phase her when you said it was 2012, but just to kind of understand in her fog, what does she think she looks like? Because if she looks in the mirror, she sees her grandmother. She looks at a picture on the cover of the book, where she's 30, 40, now that's me. Uh, we'll talk about adult daycare and client support groups, some group activities that you could do if you decide to do client support groups. 
another wonderful community service and marketing opportunity, which the family likes it because they get an hour of respite. And then eventually you have customers that will come to you later. You're providing a good service. Again, this would probably be about 50 bucks if you do an early stage group. Because if you want to do a mid-stage group, you'll need more people to do the group. So it would probably be 100 bucks to do the group. But it's, it's up to you uh, what you can afford. Uh, behaviors that we deal with in this stage, financial interventions, and driving, which are all things we're very concerned about at this stage. In early stage dementia, it's going to match Reisberg's profile of an 18-year-old to a 20-year-old. Some 18 to 20-year-olds are fine living by themselves. They do really well. Uh, some 18 to 20-year-olds have a job. They drive. They do a really good job. They, if the goal is to get this person to be home, please get them home within a month, because after a month, that's when Jenga falls. It doesn't happen right away. People show scattered skills between two totally different baselines when they come to you, and then after a month, then they fall into that baseline, that new baseline. So that's really when Jenga falls. It's not an immediate thing. That's why you sometimes wonder if it was a UTI as well. She was doing okay, and then this week she just seems out of it. That's Jenga fell. It's irreparable at that point. At this point, it's reasonable to expect this person to be independent in self-care, including learning new medical things for care, like emptying a colostomy bag or taking pills from a pill sorter. We do see a loss of job skills and organization skills, so we will start to step in and give a little more help with that and reduce responsibilities. They can make plans before actions and can be novel, creative, spontaneous. So we're working on community integration, shopping, driving, financial management, uh, appointments, and all of these high executive management skills. It's going to help the client grieve and deal with their dementia if we give them a project to express themselves and involve themselves in and, and create something that maybe they could pass down in their family. Uh, so this is kind of like a life's work kind of project using the client's superpowers uh, to, to help them engage. I still remember a lot of things from the past, so I could help with the memory book and I could start to you know, share my life with other people. Uh, there are two books you may want to consider looking at. The Complete Artist's Way is a creative curriculum that you could do with your clients. It's a 12-week program. This could be part of something that you do as a weekly support group for your clients as different art projects and daily writing. Uh, the, uh, the client would do three pages of daily writing just to kind of get all those negative thoughts out of their head and, and work on some creative projects to really express themselves that, you know, things you could frame, things that you could uh, give to their family or that they could hang on the wall and enjoy. Lanny Butler wrote a book, My Past is Now My Future. It's a really little book. Anyone got the book? My past is... It's a little green book, and in the back of it, there are these worksheets called My Way, and the client writes down history of, of their ADLs, like how do you like to do your morning routine? Do you like to bathe? Do you like to shower? What time? What's your primary language? What are some things you like to do? What are some things you hate to do? And it's like a data sheet that you put in like a time capsule and bring out later. And as a caregiver, these will be tools to help him in his future care. Maybe we know if he starts with washing his face, then that's where we should start him with the washcloth, and he's more likely to do his whole ADL because the praxis started here for the whole task. All right, let, let me show you some cool initiatives. Uh, Memories in the Making is through the Alzheimer's Association.
it's basically an online gallery where the clients create artwork and you, you can put it and, and appreciate it. They have, you know, how to start, how to get involved in the program, how to get caregivers involved in the program. It's all watercolors. They just tell you how to get started and they have pictures that the client could copy and paint or the client could do their own. And then they have the gallery showing paintings that, that people have made. Well into people's dementia, they still have good size, form, consistency, use of color. Uh, we just do see a loss of depth, uh, so we may not see as much shading. But look, that's Van Gogh. You know that's Van Gogh, right? That's, I think that's pretty cool. And then they have, uh, they must, oh, I think they, all right, so they have different, they have links to your different chapters. Let's see what Pennsylvania has for you. All they tell you where all, your, all the Alzheimer's walks are, but that's your Pennsylvania State Chapter website, which you could link to through ALZ.org or through this. The Museum of Modern Art has an initiative, which is uh, for art appreciation. Go under Visitors with Disabilities. That's the MoMA.org. And they have a Meet Me at MoMA program. There we go. There we go. Um, so they, they have a program with MoMA that you can download a curriculum, go on individuals with dementia, and on that page, Well, you can watch a video watch a video about MoMA. But and then you click on here to learn about how to do the program, the MoMA Alzheimer's Project. And they tell you how to design your program. And there's the actual curriculum online. This is free. You could just get a projector and uh, project different artworks on the wall, and then there you download a PDF of the module. You put the artwork up, and then you can sit your clients around, and then we talk about the artwork. and And there's some questions uh, to prompt participation from people. And uh, let me show you what a program like uh, this does. You could also work with your local art museum and go on field trips. Uh, just work with uh, if someone could dedicate their time to exploring art with the clients. Uh, here. This program is a gift. Can you hear? Uh, an unexpected gift. And then people who take us around uh, open up you know, visions that we didn't see before, things that we didn't know about before. So it's, it's just incredible. And it's like, in a way, coming home. You know? Yeah, because we've been here many times. Well, That's as loud as I can get it. Um, and some of you are new to this program. Before I tell you anything about it, I'd like to go around and just tell me one word that comes to your mind when you look at this. Now, what's one word that comes to your mind when you look at this? Metallic. Very good. Okay, how many?
each other affectionately, they're laughing, they're telling jokes that sometimes they'll share with you and sometimes they want to keep them to themselves. You got five teeth on one side and four teeth on the other, you know, so you got different <laughs> <laughs> I'm you, see? And you can see that you're treating them like valid, um, important adults. You're treating them with the respect that adults deserve. And sometimes you can't even tell who's the person with dementia and who's the caregiver. And that's really amazing because what it means is that everyone is interacting on the same level. And it's a level that's very high. It's, it's an adult level. So you're using and, a superpower um, With a little humor and a lot of openness, you know, you just get around the obstacles that Alzheimer's presents. Let's see if I can describe this. But George today wasn't in such a good mood when we got here and it was very crowded and... He just kind of didn't want to go and was a little upset. And then the minute he started looking at the art and Carrie uh, pointed things out, he just Probably got so involved and, in it and started looking for things himself. As soon as he's looking at the art. It brought it, I was just thinking how it brought something out for him. It brought something from the inside out. Today, the other thing I really liked was seeing how... Um, respond to one of the works with, with music. And how? what was your word? Musical. Musical? What do you say about musical? <laughs> I was going to say metallic, but musical is another thing. You know, I get public at a lot of rhythms here, you know. A lot of pop, pop, pop. He's saying a lot of bop, 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 and a lot of la, la, la. And he's pointing to this pattern that's at the bottom of the painting. And that would indicate and, very and excellent prefrontal cortical translation function, from which you might see with a frontal temporal dementia, but that's a superpower. This He's able to translate shapes to feelings what to music, and that, that's a very advanced way to look are, at art. are less art. afraid to, to give a wider interpretation. Mm -hmm. And what I find I would love to. I would love to. it brings out the very best of their thinking that isn't gone. We find that people are traveling from all over, um, you know, the five boroughs and even um, farther to come to this program because there really aren't enough programs like this out there. And um, museums that have access to visions already can very easily the site take something tells you like how this to make on. A vision and other and places that at least have one dedicated person um, can learn from their local it's Alzheimer's better than association a or their local field medical trip center they, they about this population. And that's really the most the important day. first step. And then to also talk directly with people with Alzheimer's and their caregivers about what's needed and, um, and then develop the program accordingly. It was so nice meeting you, and I hope we'll see you next month. All right? We, we leave these giveaways around our house, mm -hmm. and people talk, where did you get it? <laughs> it stimulates conversation in the home. I have them in an album, and we enjoy looking at them. Well, first of all, getting you out of bed <laughs> yeah. is, a, is a trial. It really is, until I tell you we're coming to MoMA. And I will go without you if I have to. <laughs> and how he loves it so much that he will come. And it's so stimulating afterwards, too. You feel, you feel refreshed. Yeah, enriched. Enriched. Yeah, yeah. And alive. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So this feeling that they get afterwards, this carryover, the feeling they get afterwards. 
Yep. This would be a physiological response. Um, I mean, if you're looking at it, I am releasing endorphins because I'm having a good time and I'm, I'm being appreciated and getting a lot of social peace to it. So that's refreshing and validating and it lasts. Um, I think everybody's different, you know, once, once a chemical goes in a direction, it could be stuck that way all day, good or bad.